Okay, gentlemen, so <clears throat> today we are going to continue with our uh, discussion of the theory of relativity. <clears throat> um, and today we're going to uh, add in to our discussion of velocity what happens when you include mass. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you remember from, uh, geez, maybe January or February, we were talking about the, the idea of momentum, right, which is the uh, idea of inertia in motion, right? Mass times velocity. Well, if we then look at this in a relativistic sort of way, where we're adding uh, multiple velocities together, right? You're throwing an object uh, forward from a moving truck, for example, then uh, what happens to the momentum of that thrown baseball or, or whatever it happens to be? So when we do this, um, hopefully you recall that the, um, the formula for momentum is mass times velocity, right? Um, but in a relativistic sort of way, we also have to take into account the uh, relationship with the speed of light. And remember from the last video that that's equal to uh, the inverse of the square root of 1 over v squared divided by c squared. All right. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do next is simply to, whoopsie daisy, is simply to take that formula and multiply both sides by c. All right. So the momentum times the speed of light. equals the <laughs> mass times the velocity. Gabby, hush. There must be a squirrel in the backyard. Uh, divided by this, again, this whole term, uh, v squared over c squared. Now, um, if you uh, think about this, Gabby, hush. All right. The um, the idea here then becomes this: if v if v is the speed of light, then the, for God's sakes, um, the momentum the momentum times the velocity becomes equal to energy, right? Um, because momentum times velocity times velocity is equal to m times c squared, right? If v is equal to c, then c times c is, is c squared, all right? Now, I don't have any idea why this mouse is so bad. Never buy a magic mouse from Apple. Uh, one minus. Um, this mess. And so if you look at this very carefully, <clears throat> if v is equal to c, then I get c squared over c squared, which is 1 minus 1 or 0. And so eventually, if the velocity v approaches the, uh, the speed of light, all right, actually get rid of that. If um, uh, v is equal to zero, then you end up with uh, one minus zero over um, the speed of light, or just one. Square root of one is one. And so then the original energy value of an object at rest is this. Now, does this look familiar? All right, well, this is Einstein's very famous equation, E equals mc squared. All right, this is the energy of an object at rest. Okay, how much energy can we get out of the mass of an object? Okay, now, with that in uh, mind, let's look at example four. Well, you've seen this flip up a couple of times already. Now we'll actually do it for real. Uh, it says, uh, what is the energy content? of a 0 0.046 kilogram golf ball. All right, well, so E is my big fat question mark. 
time equals the mass times the speed of light squared. This is going to be uh, 0 0.046 kilograms uh, times 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second quantity squared. Now, if you square this, you get 9 times 10 to the 16th multiplied by 0 0.046 kilograms, and that gives you 4. 0.1 uh, times 10 to the 15th, and the units turn out to be joules. Okay, so 4.1 times 10 to the 15th joules. All right, out of a uh, a motionless golf ball. So if we could convert all of the mass of a golf ball into energy, we'd get 4.1 times 10 to the 15th joules. Now, uh, how long? How long could that much energy operate a 75 watt light bulb? Well, in this case, you uh, would have to look at it in terms of the um, uh, energy value. And so here, um, I know that power times time is equal to energy. All right, this can, comes right out of the uh, energy unit that we um, used before. And so um, if I calculated the value of time, it's going to be energy divided by power. All right, this is not momentum now, it's power. And so um, this becomes uh, 4.1 times 10 to the 15th joules. Uh, divided by 75 watts. All right, now um, that gives me a, a, a value of 5.5 uh, times 10 uh, to the, I'm looking it up, 13th seconds. Now that's a lot of seconds. All right, 5.5 times 10 to the 13th seconds is actually equivalent to 1.7 times 10 to the sixth years. Now think about that, all right? If we could take a golf ball and actually convert all of its mass to energy, we could uh, light a 75 watt light bulb for 1,700,000 years. That's crazy. All right. But that's what Einstein's equation actually uh, gives us. Now, let's move on to something a little bit different. Let's, rather than talking about the mass and energy relationship, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the velocity aspect of this. Now, I know that uh, C is the ultimate speed. Nothing can move faster than the speed of light. And so the energy of an object is going to equal Einstein's motionless energy value plus whatever energy is associated with the motion, right? So the total energy of an object is the energy you get out of its mass plus the energy you get out of its motion, right? Here's where we're talking about momentum again, mass and velocity, all right? This represents the energy you get out of the mass. This represents the energy that you get out of the velocity. And what that means is that the kinetic energy is going to equal or be equal to the total energy minus the energy from the mass value. Now, that, of course, E is equal to M times C squared. And um, if we pull that term out of the original equation, Gabby, hush. My dog's so mean. All right. Now, what I did was I, I um, factored out mc squared, right? So because mc squared uh, over this is the original energy value. mc squared is the, ma the energy I get out of the mass. And so um, I, if I 
factor mc squared out, I'm left with this equation. Now, this equation is interesting because if you look at it again carefully and um, as uh, thinking about it in terms of a, uh, a limit in precalculus, if the value of v approaches c, then this term approaches zero. All right, that would give me an infinite amount of kinetic energy. All right, and that's simply not possible. All right, you cannot have an infinite amount of kinetic energy because dun dun dun. C is the ultimate speed, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. You can't have any more velocity than that. Now, what does all of this really mean? Well, in terms of moving objects, uh, what we're saying is that you can't get faster than, um, than the speed of light. So let's say you are um, driving along in a car, a pickup truck, Here's the tires. Here's you. You're sitting here. Dun, dun, dun. All right. And you, the truck is moving along at a velocity. And so this is the velocity of the source, V. And you take a baseball and you throw it at a speed that I'm going to call U prime. This is the, velo the relative velocity of the ball. All right. So then what is the total? velocity here, which I'm going to abbreviate with a, with a, it should be a lowercase u, but uh, unfortunately it's not. Now, um, at, at uh, reasonable speeds, earthbound speeds, this equation makes perfect sense. But if the truck uh, starts to move with a velocity that's near to the speed of light, then the value of u would be greater than the speed of light. And that is impossible according to all of Einstein's work, all right? And so it turns out that there is a derivation, and I'm not going to go through it, but the derivation for the, the relative speed of the ball is, or the total speed of the ball, rather, is going to be equal to the relative speed of the ball plus the speed of the truck divided by um, 1 plus now this is going to be u prime times v all divided by c squared all right and again the derivations uh, is not important at this point but this is what it turns out to be all right so the speed of the ball is going to equal um i'm sorry the 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 actual speed of the ball is going to equal the relative speed of the ball plus the speed of the truck all over that big mess of a fraction there. Now, let's say for um, a minute that the, uh, the truck is moving at a velocity of, let's say 15 meters per second, all right? Just for um, a good um, reasonable aspect, all right? So 15 meters per second, and I throw the ball at a, uh, a velocity of eight meters per second. All right, if you then plug and chug here, um, this is gonna become eight plus 15 divided by one plus eight times 15 over c squared. Now, 8 plus 15 is 23. But if you divide 23 by 3.0 times 10 to the eighth squared, you're going to get a number very close to zero. It's a really tiny number. So you've got then 8 plus 15 is 23 over 1. So it's still going to come out to be 23 meters per second in terms of significant figures. And that's what you would expect, right? The truck's moving to 15, somebody throws the ball at eight, it's gonna hit the, the target at 23 meters per second. However, if that velocity V becomes very fast and we start to approach uh, the value of um, uh, the speed of light, then things get a little bit funky here, okay? so. Let's look at example number five. Same idea. 
we're going to start again with the pickup truck. So here's the truck. Here's you standing in the back of the truck. And here's the ball moving this way. Here's the truck moving this way. Here's V. This is going to be U prime. And so uh, in this uh, example, we're going to use the uh, following numbers. Um, the truck is going to be moving at 0 0.8 times C. Uh, the ball is going to be moving relative to the truck at 0 0.5 times C. Now, if you just added those two numbers together, you would get 1.3 times the speed of light. All right. You can't move that fast because the speed of light is the maximum speed. So we have to go back and use the, uh, the formula for relative speed. And again, that's um, U prime plus V divided by um, 1 plus U prime times V over C squared. All right. So that's going to be then um, 0 0.5 times C plus 0 0.8 times C divided by 1 plus um, 0 0.5 C times 0 0.8 times C all divided by C squared. Now, in uh, this case, the uh, the C's at the uh, bottom, uh, the, the bottom portion cancel out, right? C times C is C squared divided by C squared is um, uh, one. And so it's simply 0.5 times uh, 0.8, which is 0 0.04, right? Um, plus one is 1 1.04. And so this becomes 1.3 times the speed of light divided by 1.04. Now, if you do a, a, a quick bit of um, arithmetic here, you'll end up with a value, and I'm not going to plug in the 3.0 times 10 to the eighth, but it's going to turn out to be 0 0.93 times c, 93% of the speed of light. And that is reasonable, all right, uh, because it's obviously less than the speed of light. So 93 or 0.93 times the value of c. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk, let's use another example where both um, objects are in, where two objects are in motion, both the source and the target. All right, so the USS Enterprise is approaching a Klingon warbird at a relative speed of 0 0.7 C, okay? Both ships are moving at a constant velocity, not the same velocity, but, but they're both moving at a constant velocity, and Captain Kirk fires the phasers, which travel at the speed of light. So at what speed do the Klingons see the light approach, and uh, at what speed do they see, do the, uh, do the, the Klingons rather um, see it leave the uh, Enterprise? Now, um, so uh, in the first case, um, obviously they are traveling um, in an inertial frame of reference, right? And therefore, so the at what speed did the Klingons see the light approach? The answer there is simply C, all right, because they're moving. Um, at uh, at uh, two uh, constant inertial frames of reference. Now, uh, at what speed do they do the Klingons see the the thing uh, leave the Enterprise? In this this case, I didn't even touch the mouse that time. In this case, it's going to be C minus zero. Holy Christmas. Zero point 
7C. And so the answer to the last question is going to be 0.3C. So even though the, the phasers are moving at the speed of light, the Klingons are only going to see them um, leave the Enterprise at uh, a little under a third of the speed of light. Okay, now I'm sure that that is, um, has thoroughly confused you, and that's okay, all right? Uh, relativity is one of those things that uh, most graduate students in physics have a very hard time grasping. And so I hope that over the last two videos, I haven't given you um, too many headaches or, or made your heads explode. Now, um, for the uh, last lesson, which will be tomorrow, June the 11th, um, what I would like you to do is be ready for a uh, review activity. That activity will not cover relativity. It will cover um, questions five through nine on the modern physics worksheet okay and that my friends will be the very last um, activity and the last grade for the fourth marking period and for the year there will be no assignments due on friday although if you have any uh, assignments that you've not done you have until 2 30 on friday to get those in all right so i'll put all of this in the portal so that you know all about it um, and uh, in the meantime, have a great summer. And uh, for those of you who I don't see next year in AP Physics, have a nice life.